Hello, welcome to Straw Family Farm Take Two. I'm Christy. Today we're going to start in the chapel with one of my very favorite verses. Um, is Proverbs 23, 7. For he thinketh in his heart, so he is. Um, just trying to remember I have a good heart and getting that out into the world with a lot of positivity. Oh, let's face it, guys. This world has a lot of negativity. Getting positivity out there is a little bit harder to do. Um, move y'all closer. I had to go and get one more thing before I started and I was all set up and then I had to run and go get something and then so yeah you're a little off. <laughs> I fixed you. All right so we're gonna start with Totally Hooked and I did finish my shawl that came for the December pattern. Now it is beautiful. I love it. It's very um old-fashioned I guess I really like the feel of it it's got the feel of a hand spun yarn it's got little bobbles in it um, if you remember I did modify the pattern I didn't like the big bump that the back pole did on where you're supposed to do the um, double crochets it was supposed to be a back pole double crochet and I didn't like it, it made a ridge but not a ridge that laid flat so if you turn this this way you can see well maybe a little bit you can see there's still that ridge here and that defined ridge here if you can see that there's a defined ridge between the chains and the double crochets i didn't like how bulky it was um and it actually made it shorter so to add a little length to mine which I didn't get as much length as I thought I would because of something else. Um, and this has not been blocked. It's still got my two ends. It's got this end and this end. And yes, there's more than one skein in here. And I'll explain to you why I don't have ends in that later. Um, and so let's get into what went wrong. It's not that it went wrong because it's beautiful. The last row this was supposed to be two double crocheted together and then this little bobble i got all the way down and had approximately this much left to do and no yarn to do it so when i followed the pattern i came up short well why was that okay there are several different reasons that that can happen first off i altered the pattern not enough that it should have made a difference in yardage okay but I also could have added in an extra stitch on a row because of the way I read the pattern. Now it's still beautiful, still very square, still very, you know, um, did I do it on purpose? No, I tried to follow the pattern. But remember, if you make a mistake, it does add in stitches or take stitches away. But if you incorporate it in every row, it becomes part of the pattern and part of your individuality in that pattern so yes I have the look the same look that she had minus the extra ridges I have a beautiful shawl but I didn't have enough to finish what did I do so I know you guys have talked heard me talk about certain things before and when I was at the farm I did a lot more explaining of stuff and I'm trying to get back to that um, instead of you just seeing what I'm crocheting and knowing that I changed it now you're gonna learn why and I, and I want to try and talk about that I've decided I'm gonna do a few things different and we'll see how it goes so the first thing that I did was rip out the last part because I couldn't finish it and I don't want this much and I'm not gonna go and have to find this yarn on the internet to get it here and then take all that time to wait on it just to finish this little bit. I'm not that patient, guys, honestly. But years ago, my grandma taught me to um, knit and crochet and spin, and weave. And she told me that they were lifelong lessons that I would need for the rest of my life. When nobody else had anything, I would always have a sweater or socks or 
Um, she said you can make anything out of crochet and that and I told her I said underwear and and brassieres is where I draw the line. I'd rather those be cotton, just saying. <laughs> not that you can't make them. And I've seen some beautiful like tank tops, not that I'd ever wear them. Just saying. So she wanted me to have the skills to make beautiful things even if I didn't have any money. And so she gave me this book and it's the encyclopedia of 300 crochet pattern stitches and designs now any time that i have to finish something and i need an edge or a trim or a certain spot filled i've actually made something out of here to make a patch <laughs> over so it looked really cute because it's on the the hip bum anyway it looked good so um, I pulled it out, okay, still had it attached at the time, went to my handy dandy book, and then I started flipping through. Now, the wonderful thing about this book is it tells you how many you need, okay? Multiples of 32 plus 6 is needed for this one right here. It has it done, a photo of it done, and then it has the actual chart, and it has the written as you can see okay so I really like the ending to this and I like that little it, it had a little bobble thing on the end and it was two double crochets put together so you'd have two double crochets in here so essentially you'd have this part over here on each one of these little uh, V stitches that's great but I didn't have enough so, I looked in the book, found something that was relatively simple and close to what it had done, and this is what I came up with. So, my ending is different, and it's not in each V-stitch, it's between the V-stitches. I just did a chain three to make this a smooth turn, okay, that is getting in the way, but I probably should, this is where I started from. So I have a chain three, making it just a smooth little turn right down into that, and then put on my thing. Now I did this, the chain stitch takes the least amount of yarn. So I chain six, then I slip knotted to the fourth to make this little loopy bobble, and then I chain two and single crochet it into the next one. So literally, there's eight chains in this and one slip stitch. So that saved me, and I haven't blocked it. You can tell that it kind of, you know, but it gave me the ending look the same, almost the same as hers. It's not as bulky, and I think it fits better because I didn't use the double crochet on the back pole because this was a very thick ending and this now is not it just kind of blends in and I think it works just fine it this has not been blocked this does have a percentage of wool in it and it needs to be blocked and all of that but it is beautiful there goes my paper and it is done not exact to the pattern remember mistakes that I made and, and it probably happened because either I put in one too many stitches on each row because if you remember with the bulky part I didn't like it I wanted it to lay flat so if anything didn't lay flat I ripped it out and redid it to what I thought the pattern said but I could have modified it without even thinking I just wanted it to lay flat and I didn't want that extra bulk so I like the pattern that it does and it does have the little ridges the very defined ridges that hers had and it's very long and it is warm it really is this is that Lincoln fog um, that I got from the Mary Maxim kit you can see there is halo on that thing um, it's awesome it's awesome I, I truly love this if I was going to continue to make stuff I think that I'd work more with this. I've got to investigate what colors because this is just right up my alley and you'll see why here in a little bit. Okay, so this one is done. I was short yarn. I played yarn chicken, lost, ended up having to, I'm going to get my paper, 
ended up having to um ugh, change a stitch or two but it's okay and what's most important of all i'm happy with it okay so if you ever i've had people ask me about a pattern and they'll decipher it and they'll say i just don't get this part right here Ooh. i will show them what is in the pattern and they're like but it looks funny okay so let's change it and then you repeat that change every time and it becomes part of the pattern it's no longer a mistake okay patterns are not set in stone you can change things and yours doesn't have to be exactly like theirs this looks enough like hers nobody's gonna know that i changed it it's and, and i like it so i know so what not a big deal honestly okay so keep that in mind when you're making stuff mistakes are only mistakes if you don't repeat them if you repeat them in a pattern they're no longer mistakes they're part of the pattern and i've said that for years and people just look at me going what my granny taught me that she's like i was like i think the very first time i made a mistake that i visibly could see she made me rip out she says you have to rip out and i said well i make mistakes all the time she goes yeah but you can't see them if you can see them and they affect the quality of the work sure rip out and redo if it doesn't affect the quality and you figured out you made that mistake repeat it on in this case on the other side and make it part of the pattern you don't have to go back unless you really just want to and trust me guys i'm a perfectionist so mine i can guarantee you both these sides are even i have ripped out rows because i got off one and they didn't match i didn't care if they were the pattern but i'd have one stitch less on one side than the other oh i ripped the whole thing out for that it, it's got to be even and it's got to be perfect now truth be known will anybody be counting my stitches besides me <laughs> no <laughs> not a bit not one iota but it's me and i want it i always told my granny i wanted to make it look store-bought i wanted that perfectionism of store-bought and if i could make it look like it was perfect i was happy with it so therefore that's how I do it I only rip out if I make a mistake that you can visibly see if not oh I guess I did that maybe I can do it on the other side if I can do it on the other side I just incorporate my mistake into the pattern unless I hate it okay so don't ever think that you're you have to follow a pattern or I did something wrong because I only have well now I have this much so if I was to get a hole in that or snag it on something out of the barn I have something to fix it with and i like that so um just remember that it, it's one of the things that my granny taught me that is invaluable because people say well i didn't get this pattern right i didn't get this pattern right if you will you stop i have a puppy down here hitch and he is trying to lick my purple yarn and i'll tell you why i have that here in a little bit but anyway so i do use this i use it on a regular basis if i am just flying by the seat of my pants and want to stitch um i do believe most of these are done in thread crochet for the examples because they photoed better but you can make little flowers like this and put them on jeans and patch things um i put them on over uh, like a shawl that had a moth hole so i fixed it and then of course it left something looking unperfect so i made a, a little flower or doily or whatever you want to call it out of this and then i uh, <clears throat> sewed it on over it so in this book there's everything that you could ever want from double crochet treble crochet v-stitch shell relief stitch puff stitch popcorn stitch clusters drop stitches um x stitch and there's a whole section of how um and i've used that drop stitch <laughs> how to cover up drop stitches <laughs> a lot um 
I've used a lot of these like for the ending. I've used this one in particular um, on some shawls. And it just, I don't know. I just like it, if that makes sense. And so, and then of course you've got this little butterfly thing here. Little trims. And this book was made, so these photos are not super great, but it's enough that you can do. My granny gave me this one, and it's copyrighted from 1988, okay? She had a different one, and she actually bought this one for me, I think my, oh, 30 years ago. So, she could not find a brand new one, so she bought, bought a used one from a used bookstore, and I have had it since then, and I remember it looked pristine when I got it, it really did, but... Yeah, I use it a lot. It's got dye stains on the top. Because um, I'll be dyeing and looking through while my dye, and while my yarn does, I'll be looking through for. And you can mix and match those to make different patterns out of them. And I have done that before, so I use it a lot. It, But it's just because I alter things a lot. So it gives you an idea of how things work up what multiples you'll have to do. It saves you a lot of figuring and counting. Um, it, I like it. I really do. It's one of the best things Granny ever gave me. So, all right. I do think that is all I have for Totally Hooked. Okay, is that one? And we're going to move on to In the Basket because I have been working on this little gem. Again, Hitch, get your nose out of that. He loves wool, too. I don't know why he's doing it today, though. Normally, he doesn't do it with me. I'm sitting right here. Okay. I have gotten to here. I am not keeping count of the rows. I plan on using this whole thing and being done with it. So, I probably, this week, got maybe that much done. So... Yeah, it's getting there. It's getting there, and I am working on it. This, right now, in the basket, I have this in the geo, which is where I wanted to be for the first of the year. So, um, I'm where I want to be, I guess. I'd like to have this one done. If you remember when I started in October saying what I wanted for the end of the year, I said I wanted this one done. Um, but it's okay. It's okay. I didn't get it done. I am working on it. It is small and it takes a little bit. I can't just do it. And I also have noticed that when I'm doing with bulkier yarn, I, a lot of times I can do it by feel. I don't have to look. Um, I count in my head, you know, I don't mark anything. Um, and part of that is, is that I've just been doing it so long that that's not something you can learn. It's just is what it is. So, I can crochet on bigger yarns, watching TV or talking to someone. That one I have to pay attention to, that and the geo. So those two are in my basket, and that is all that is in my basket right now. Yes. So, well, now the little squares that I was doing to make that um, around the world, I'm still working on those when I need a mindless knit. So now that the shawl's done. I did work on the shawl first. So, all right. Those two are in the, so then we have in the dye pots and on the wheel. This one I'm kind of, you guys have seen this before, okay. I have, oh, I don't know this one, 1,096 yards of this. And it is purple. This is a deep, deep, rich purple. It, it, it's not so gray. It's just this lighting. Somebody told me once to hold something red <laughs> up against it so that it'll show the true color. So I have something else that I'll show you, but I'm going to use one of these. They said it just has to be in the frame. Eh, didn't work. <laughs> it didn't work. So this is deep, 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 deep purple. It's not like the gray eggplant that you're seeing. It's actually a, a very deep purple, and this is a light mauve purple. I've got a thousand yards. 
my question to you guys is what am I going to make with it? Um, I am getting to a point in my life where I want to make substantial pieces, not just hats and mittens and, and uh, cowls and that kind of stuff. I do have a lot of ponchos and shawls that I've done. Yeah. So I'm thinking I'm going to start doing maybe some sweaters some leg warmers I actually still wear those when I figure skate so I know you guys probably are going what <laughs> yeah so when I go skating I do wear leg warmers um and I thought those are you know substantial I'm not a big sock knitter I know that some people are I'm just not number one they dry out my feet because I don't use acrylic, I use real wool. And they leave my feet very dry, and I don't know why. So I just don't, if I don't wear them, I don't make them. Um, I have made RJ some, and he, this sounds terrible, he uses them for warmth only. He doesn't like the feel of them because he's grown up with cotton socks. So he puts his cotton sock on it, and then if he has to be out in the mud and the muck and the puts his wool sock on over it I don't know it's just us we're weird okay yes I can make them but no I don't enjoy making them I have made them when I needed to um, I've made slippers uh, my problem is is I get the idea I'm gonna make all these sets like the hat and the cowl and the scarf and the mittens and the, the uh, slippers and then I never wear them together you never see my hat and my cowl at the same time because I mix and match. So I don't know if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> I really don't. Um, okay, so I need a pattern for those. I have been looking. I've looked on Ravelry. Okay. Um, I'm not new to where to go to find a pattern. Just can't find any that knock my socks off that I really want to do with that. Um, I found one, but it took more yarn than what I had. It took like 2,000 yards instead of 1,000. It is what it is. Okay. All right. So, on the wheel, I'm still working on the Romney top. And let me get over here. I started with two pounds of Romney top. This is all I have left. It's about eight ounces. Okay. So, so far, I have done one, two skeins, two ply. Um, each one of these is, this one's 358 yards of a two ply. Okay, they have not been soaked. So, there it is. And then this one is like 312, yeah, 312 yards. Okay, I have that eight ounce ball left. And today's project, I'm plying two. Now, I will ply until my big bobbin gets full. I have that country time, I call it my jumbo, but it's not a jumbo, it's country time or something. It's for the Ashford Kiwi. It's the only big bobbin I have, and so I use it for plying. It also fits right onto my skeiner and I can skein right off and click the yardage. So, and we'll get to that here in just a little bit. But I am going to ply this today. It won't take all of it to make another ply. So wherever these ends, when that bobbin is full, I will refill these with this, and then I will ply it off. And I will use every inch of this. I don't have extra bobbins with little bits on them. And I'll tell you how I'm going to address that here in just a little bit. Okay. So, I have those two skeins, which, you know, right now we're looking at 600 yards. I'm thinking I can get another 600 yards out of this, maybe more. And I run on doing two pounds, you know. I run uh, anywhere from a 1,000 to 2,000 yards or a thousand to 1,200 yards normally I am working on doing this a little bit finer um, but I don't know I kind of like it and so I, 
it depends on what I get. And next, once I get all this done, you guys will see it go in the dye pot. And I think I'm going to do like bright red um, in honor of Valentine's Day. Because at Christmas I did a green and gray. Then I did the purples. So I'm trying to not do anything the same colors. Um, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> so that's what's on the wheel. RJ's World, he is still, he put on his very second roping. He said that he, there was a couple of things he would fix that he didn't, he felt like the first one he was more organized, but the second one had more people and he had a little bit of trouble with the shoots, which is not on him. That's on the arena that he rented. So yeah, he paid their fee and he made him a little money and he was just a stock contractor and flagman. So, um, Macy, his other half did the books. They did good. So it's a good thing. Uh, it was a woman's rope in this time because Macy, of course, is like, hey, my friends want in on this. And what it is is RJ puts on a very different style roping. He doesn't pay round money. He doesn't pay. You're either in it to win it or you're not. And a lot of guys like that. They like the, am I good enough? Um, the fastest time, whether they place in the average or not, gets their entry fees back. Just because they were the fastest time out of the whole roping. So they have, I believe, three head, two two head and a short, anyway, um, and it's your average time, the shortest average time, the fastest average time, gets a paycheck. And then he only pays the top three holes or four holes. That's it. So he's got the fastest time and those average winners. So you're either in it or you, either you're in it to win it and you can run three head consistently or you can't and RJ says that there was a lot of people he had waiting lists to get in normal ropens they pay less money out because they have less money to spread around because they pay more times so you if you win one round and another round you get your round money for this it's like you know I'm gonna make up some numbers, okay? So he'd get, say he wins the round in the first one and the round in the second one, he gets $200 in the first one, $200 in the second one, and then he's gotta do the short go round. He gets, say he wins that too, that's another $200. Well, that's $600 because they're paying three holes, three holes, three holes. Now, RJ did not do that. He said, this is the way we run, ran it when I was in 4-H. You did all your head and that's your, your ending was your ending. You didn't have all these extra chances to win money back. You're either in it to win it or you're not. And so he pays, you run your two head, top 10, run your three. All those people that don't get to the top 10 don't get a paycheck at all. So your goal in the first two ropens is to get to that last one. That gives you a chance to win some money. These men walked away with $1,400 for first place. It's better than the $600 if you won each round. So he does one till, one pot, pay out one time. That's it. You're either in it to win it. So he put on the men's and then Macy was like, hey, my friends want a chance to do this. Bunch of girls. He had, he opened it up. He did... 15 men the first time he says if we do 15 guys this is what the arena is going to cost this is what it's going to cost to put it on this is our expenses you take that out this is what's left of the money your entry fee money and this is what the payday will be and he says we have to have 15 to cover this money okay he got 15 guys the women when he got to it he says all right he says now that i've done it once because he had such a, he had double the interest. Like he had, he opened it up to 25 and within hours only had two spots left. So he did 25 women. And it takes an air of confidence to do something like that because it's all or nothing. And you're putting your money up with a big gamble that you're going to go home with nothing. 
Um, you have to be consistent and you have to rope all three. So if you can't do that, there's no sense you entering that kind of roping. But they like to try. And in the middle of winter, when there's no other ropings going on, they take their little $200 that they've saved up because they're not going all the time. They enter it with a chance of a big payday. They like that. So RJ did that. He did say that there was a couple of things he'd change, you know, just, but he's done two of them and that's it. So he doesn't know if he'll do it again. It, but he, his kind of ropings are so different than anyone else's. And what's funny is some older gentleman told him that he couldn't get those spots filled. He says, they won't come to a roping like that. If they don't have a chance to win money in every round, they won't come. RJ had waiting lists to get into those ropings. And the one thing that stopped him, he didn't have enough cattle. He had enough cattle to put on a roping for 15 the first time. He did go and he ended up with 10 more head that he got on a really good deal. So he got him healthy and he's like, oh, well I can do 10 more. So he did 25. He, the number of cattle only having a certain number of runs, he will not put a ton of runs on his cattle. That's pointless. So he had to have the 15 head the first time just run three times and they had a break during the day. So, and they weren't run back to back. So the whole 15 were run and then they were run again in the same order. And then the top 10, if any looked like they were getting tired or just not holding up to, you know, the roping, he took the top 10 of those for the last round and he didn't use those weaker five. And then he loaded them up, took them home, fed them and watered them and all that stuff. And they were only gone from the place for a day and it worked out great. And so the next time he had 25, he went and did it and he did it the same way. So each of those cattle only had three runs on the max. And if they were a weaker one that, and, cause you won't know if they can take three runs if you're not running them every day. And RJ doesn't run his every day, three in a row. So max they had on them three runs and then the two runs, you know, was the bottom thing. So the Kef just had to rent. Other than that, they were in a pen with a bunch of hay and water and just hanging out inside. So that's a good thing. But I'm very proud of him for doing that. So um, I think that's it. He's been working on the truck some. He's been coming down and him and roommate been working on the truck. Um, and that is, you know, one of the things that he's been, he's trying to get it done. He's trying to get his old work truck back. So he's put about $500 worth of parts in it and then his work. So that's not too bad. And he'll have a brand new truck when it gets going because it's been rebuilt. So, all right, then in my world, first off, it was my birthday on Sunday. RJ didn't get to come down. He told me last week he came and he ate with me ate two meals plus worked on the truck. He said, mom, you know, this meal, I had baked a ham that he had, he brought down and he says, here, bake this up. That was my birthday meal from him. So that's what he got me was, I sent the ham back with him. He's, he's having tough times. I made it, we all ate on it and then it went back. <laughs> so, but at work, I did get two amazing gifts. And the first you see me drinking, this is my go-to cup now. It says, horses keep me stable. And I love this color. I don't know what it is about this color. It's a metallic-y, but it, it's just, and the part that gets me, and I've never had this before, so I'm really tickled. It comes with two metal straws for my cold drinks. Um, you don't want to drink hot drinks out of those. And it comes with a brush to clean them with. So now I don't have to have those straws, those plastic straws in my car. I have these. So, yeah, and they go quite nicely. This has coffee in it, so I don't do hot stuff through metal straws. That just doesn't make sense to me, but the cold ones do. Um, I have figured out, though, that this straight one stirs my coffee really good. <laughs> I've been using it as a stir. Um, so, yeah, I got that. 
And then I got this. Now, we're going to have to censor this. It, it's cute. I love it. But you know on this podcast, this is a family podcast. Okay? Anyone can watch this without fear. Um, so, I got this. And I will read it to you here in a minute. Okay? But it's really cute. And it says, horse girls know how to handle beep. That's where we're going to censor. We walk through it, shovel it, step in it, land in it, and smell like it, which is why we don't put up with any of yours. So I apologize for the bad word. We're not going to say it. We're not going to do it. You know, I put my thumb across it. You get the point if you're an adult. If you're a kid, it's not something that you need to say, okay? It's cute. It's funny. But funny doesn't always need to be said, okay? So, I did get that and the mug. Roommate, <clears throat> you guys understand living on a budget, okay? I was flattered. And the fact that, you know, roommate's on a budget. I'm on a budget. Roommate went out and got me, <laughs> it's Eddie's or Edie's, E-D-Y, ice cream. I love flavored ice cream. And I, roommate got me mint chocolate chip, a whole thing of it put a spoon on it and said, here, this is all for you. Of course, I shared. I'm not going to eat from the container. But, yeah, I got ice cream and a card. So, there's too much work here to do anything very expensive or something I don't need. I mean, I love this, okay? I do. And I love my mug. Would I have bought them for myself? No. Did the girls at work buy them for me? Yes. Do roommate and I have the extra cash to go blow on, you know, even if this was $5 and this is, you know, $5, that's 10 bucks. Do you know how much weather stripping you can get for $10? Just saying. So I don't fault roommate at all. I love the ice cream. It's my favorite kind of ice cream. And we sat and had a bowl of ice cream together and none of roommates birthday gift went to waste. There's still some in there. We're still eating on it. It was great, you know? So, dinner with RJ, ice cream with roommate, and a few gifts from work. So, I think I had a great birthday. So, yeah. Anyway. But, moving on. Um, I did have a dentist appointment. I will say this. I don't like my new dentist. I switched jobs. So, I switched insurance, which meant I had to switch dentists. I don't like them. They're rough. For the first, so I used to go to Spring Dental, and I'm not going to give you the name of the new one that I go to, but it is a marketed brand. I used to go to Spring Dental. Um, I had an entire crown done. Never had a day I couldn't eat on it. Never had a day where it was sore. Never had a day anything. And it was, they had to drill down in and do a, almost a full root canal on it. And I had chipped it. So then they had to build it back up. And it was done in two phases. I get it. But they call me the next day. How's your mouth? Have you been eat? You know, are you able to eat? We know that that's a lot of work, blah, blah, blah. It wasn't sore. My jaw wasn't sore, nothing. The new dentist, last time I went, it was a cleaning and one tooth that had lost a filling she needed to replace. Well, okay, so the cleaning made my teeth, all of my teeth, sore for two days. They were rough. I don't know why. I started going to Spring Dental when I hadn't been to a dentist in over 10 years. And their cleaning of 10 years worth of buildup was not half as rough as the one where I'd already had it like a year ago. I, when I switched, I was ready for my annual. I think I was like two months late on my annual cleaning. How can I have that much buildup that it's got to be that rough? I just don't think so. Um, then the tooth that she repaired um, that I chipped the filling for, she redid it, but now the outside layer has chipped. 
I don't know what they've done to it, but they're telling me a filling at my other dentist or this whole crown and everything with the partial root canal is 420 some bucks. Now they want over 600 to fix one that wasn't a problem until they had to, to fix the filling that chipped. So I'm not real happy with them. My jaw is still, um, I had this done two days ago. When I came home, they had done, I had another filling on this side right here that had to be done. So my whole face was swollen here and this was swollen here. And I couldn't eat, couldn't drink, couldn't anything. I couldn't even smile. I couldn't laugh. My face did not, like the whole thing was numb. They put a shot up in the roof of my mouth. I've never had a shot up in the roof of my mouth. Um, I got this little filling done and then this one down here they did and they still haven't finished this tooth. They want 600 bucks. <sighs> I'm not made of money. So yeah, as soon as I get that tooth repaired though, my mouth's in pretty good shape. <laughs> so yeah, the only thing I am so disappointed in is how rough they are. And my jaw just hurt for two days. It is just now. So Tuesday it hurt. Wednesday, every time I laughed, it hurt. Every time I smiled, it hurt. It hurt way back into the jaw where your where your jaw meets. Where the all the way the roof of my mouth hurt. And this, I'll be honest with you. I didn't brush my teeth till this morning because this is so raw, like the gums and stuff, that if I brush it, it makes them bleed. I've never had bleeding gums. Not even, not going to the dentist for 10 years because we didn't have dental insurance. I never had that. And I brush, I floss, I have switched to a water pick at the recommendation of this dentist. Um, and I use mouthwash. I don't understand how I, my face could hurt so bad and my teeth could hurt so bad when the other dentist did it after that, such a long stretch of me not going to the dentist and I didn't have any of that. So I, I don't know. I, I'm not real happy with the new dentist. But I have to have a dentist that's in my network or my insurance won't pay it. So I am, a uh, roommate told me to look at my list and see if there's another dentist on that list that's not with that chain so that I could get a different price. She said, maybe I could go and get, you know, a different price. I said, okay. So I am going to shop that around. Um, like I said, my whole face, I mean, all the way up into my sinus cavity was numb. It felt funny. My nose was numb. I don't get it, but my whole face was swollen because I had one. Yeah trying to think which side it was it's this bottom this top yeah so but I don't like I mean I understand a little soreness I get that they're sticking a needle in just to numb it and so anytime that you break your skin you know that's a wound I get it but it doesn't need to hurt for two days and this joint right back here still if I bust out laughing still hurts and I don't know and this one it's okay but yeah and then I found where they had not on the roof of my mouth but down here on yeah this side is where I had the bottom work done there was a knot where she had given me that shot and you still can feel it I've never had that happen before either I don't know if I should 
Or do you think that dentist? I, I just don't know. Um, I am going to look and see if there's any others on my list and see if I can switch because they're just too rough. Absolutely too rough. Don't know. That's just my feelings. Um, so, there was that. My birthday. And then, so, hey, 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 no lick in the wool. Quit. Go. Uh, go. That's it. Oh, you camera shy, huh? Put you on camera and he runs away. <laughs> That's it. She's wanting to lick. I tried to put the plastic bag over what he was trying to lick. <laughs> so, he's not happy about that. You're fine, baby. Um, worm is in the other room sound asleep so the other thing that I'm working on is Valentine's Day so obviously the girls our branch manager does some amazing gifts for all of us throughout the year since she's the one that does the gifts she gets shortchanged well, there's two of us up front, which is customer service representatives, and we decorate the office. We have a Valentine's Day tree. It's just a white four foot tree, and we put different um, holidays on it. We always have a container out for, and this is stuff that we've started since I've been there because I do what's callbacks, and a lot of people say nice things, but only I hear them because I do them through text. They're texting with me and it's very personal. I mean, I'm a person and they're a person and it's not a robo text. So they talk to me, which is funny because the other day Mona was texting with this lady and she answered Mona's question. She said, Hey, Christy. <laughs> and Mona's like, your turn, you know, because they get used to me being on the end of that text. I'm the texter and I do it on the computer. It's all set up to do it. And at first they were like, I thought that was a robocall. It's like, no, that's me, Christy. And so we were laughing. Some of them call me Crystal. Some of them call me, because my name tag says Christine and they know it's wrong. So they can't remember what it is. So I talked to my boss and I was like, you know, hey, order me another tag that actually says Christy so they know that who I am. And, uh, but yeah, I'm Crystal. I'm Christy. I'm Christine, um, we had a lady who was talking to one of our doctors and she says, well, Christine said, it. and she loses Christine. We don't have a Christine here. And she says, yes, you do right out at the front desk. And when they got done with their conversation, she's like, okay, it didn't dawn on her Christy. She's in the middle of examining an animal doing thing, you know, medical stuff she's got her mind full she's trying to take care of this the lady saying well christine had me do this and had me do that and she's like oh well that's great i don't know who christine is but okay she's doing awesome and so when they came out of the room the doctor came up and said um hey we need to make another appointment blah blah, blah. and they always tell me what is the follow-up instruction so i can get them print out i can get them whatever they need and the lady looks at me and she goes see christine and I had my name bag on. Well, my hair always covers it. And the doctor looks at me and she goes, Christy. And I said, eh, Christine. <laughs> and I put my hair back. And she went, never knew that. Never dawned on her. And so then the tags, I'm referred to as Crystal to them. Because they're just trying to figure out, they know that the name badge is wrong. And they're like, Crystal? Yeah but it's not really wrong i am christine but i never have gone by that ever i have gone by chris i've gone by christy but i've never gone by chris uh, by christine um i've been called christina i've been called christine i just don't like that name um i do like christy so i like a variation of that name i just don't like the whole christine thing and so yeah um, but anyway, back to what I was saying, uh, we have started putting out a can, um, and it's just a coffee can with a slit in it and we decorate it for whatever to match our holiday tree. And it gives our customers an opportunity to say nice, nice things about the staff. Well, 
we're also working on them putting a name with a face because our customers they just know them hey how are you you know they'll see them out know exactly who they are but not know their name at all so we're looking at getting just some headshots with a name across it so that they actually know who they're complimenting who they're you know not we have one lady who's been there one doctor and one tech that's been there forever and I actually had somebody walk up and say, oh, you know that one lady, she's in the back, she's been here forever. And I'm like, yeah, that would be Tamara. <laughs> so you just kind of go that way. And then if they do grooming, Deb is their go-to. Oh, you know the little short lady, she's been here. Yeah, that's Deb. So Deb, I think, has been there like 12 years. Tamara's been there seven. Dr. Gatlin's been there like 15 13 or 15 or something yeah they've been there a while but people still don't remember their name they remember their face they know who they are and what they do for them and they appreciate it but they can't convey it because they don't know their names um and we do wear name badges the problem is is my hair covers mine um deb does stuff in and out in and out so if she gets hot she takes her jacket off but she has to have it on so she just puts it on her jacket Mona has hers on her shirt but then she'll wear a sweater over it because she gets cold they're not always visible is the problem so we're gonna get that going back to what I'm doing today okay so the office manager also has a birthday coming up so I'm working on the birthday and Valentine's Day doing kind of the same concept of a different thing so and I'm recycling so this is a little crafty thing. She has a personal trainer. She's very conscious about what she eats, um, but she loves dachshunds. So I found this little Valentine's Day dachshund cup at the dollar store, okay? It was a buck. You know how I am, it was a buck. And then these, we had this cute little mug that had these in it and it got busted at the office. So you, we threw the mug away, but I ripped these out. Oops ripped these out before we threw it away and I kept them I didn't know what I was going to do with them and then we had these straws they're just paper straws that somebody had so I divided the gold and the silver I have another little cup we love her so this is going to be birthday this is going to be I just bought them they were Valentine's Day we love her X's and hearts O's you know love whatever um but then I'm going to take and make these little straws. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vary the heights of them. I'm going to get me some foam to put in the bottom. I shredded some red um, Christmas paper that was left over. I like red foil. And I'm going to put it around it. So it'll have the little foam in it and then the little papers. And then I'll have um, some protein bars and some Atkins protein. Or not protein. Atkins keto friendly she likes caramel with chocolate on it and these are gmo free uh, keto friendly candies okay sugar free all that good stuff because she firmly believes that if you're having a craving for chocolate it's harder to just oh my gosh no 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 she believes to let your body have what it's asking for and what your taste is asking for but she'll do it with one square. She will not sit and eat a whole candy bar. She prefers to have sugar free. She prefers to cut, you know, so she, she holds on to the one time cheat. And so I'm gonna do three, the box of protein bars comes like four. So I'll put two protein bars in each one of these. And then there's 15, I think of the little square chocolate things. And so I'll divide them and put seven or eight in each one. I am going to find some cute flowers to put in here so that it's got flowers. I want to add some pink flowers to this. And honestly, we're going to do probably two, you know, in each. And then I've got one that was just greenery. So I think if we do this and then the candy and then put some pink flowers with them. I have one for, for Valentine's Day and one for her birthday. And I don't know which is which. I mean, this one could be her birthday right and this one could be more valentine's day but then when she gets done she she can re-gift the mugs i'm not a big person about oh don't give away no it she can re-gift these she can 
put different flowers in them and use them around her home if she wanted. She can decorate her kitchen with them. Um, it's just something tangible to let her know because she's going to eat the candies. You know she is. She's not going to eat them all in one sitting. I'm not going to lie to you about that. But um, I'm also going to take, and I found these little foam heart things that I was using for red. Um, there's red and pink, and she likes pink. So there's red and pink, and I'm going to use those. Ooh, I dropped one. I don't know where it went. I'll pick it up in a minute. I'm going to use those on the candies like so the stick will have a candy or a protein bar on it and then each one will have like a little heart um and i'm gonna do one pink one red i i'm probably and this sounds terrible i'm probably gonna do roommate the same thing for valentine's day just but not with protein bars just favorite candy bars or treats or whatever you know because it's cheap okay And I probably will not use a dollar store mug for um, roommate because roommate drinks coffee. Shelby does not drink coffee. Um, she could use these for cold drinks. When I buy them at the dollar store, they make me nervous because number one, they're not very heavy. And if you go from hot to cold in these, I, I think they would crack. They're just they're just inexpensive that, that's all I can say and I've actually had one of these that I was holding and the mug came off you know and so at Christmas I went and found this little snowman mug and I told the girl that got my gift I said I wouldn't trust that with with hot stuff I just wouldn't cold stuff you can clean up if it breaks who cares hot stuff if that handle was to break <laughs> so yeah so I'm working on that today I'm gonna get my Valentine's Day stuff done I am looking for patterns and then, like I said, this is going to be dyed. Now, the one thing I did want to talk to you guys about, and this is getting a little long. Um, I am going to start putting up short little clips. I've had people inquire how to do this, how to do that with my spinning, how I draft, how I don't, and I don't pre-draft anything. Um, so I'm going to do little short ones, and I might be putting those up from time to time. So if there is something you want to know, um, one of the ones that I'm going to talk about is how not to have all those ends as you attach balls, how I do it and how my grandmother did it for years. Um, I'm going to talk about how to do those and we'll just go from there. We'll see how things go, if that makes sense. Um, but look for a few more videos, um, mostly on spinning crochet. If there's any tricks or tips you need to know, there'll be some dyeing ask um i can't give you a die hard way that it's done but i can give you how i do it if it helps you it helps you if it doesn't it doesn't so i'm going to come up with some little uh I, I, one of the things i am going to look for is a very inexpensive little tripod for that camera so that i can actually set it around instead of having to have it clipped to my keyboard my laptop and then have to turn it <laughs> it's like try and get it i'm going to get a very inexpensive little tripod type thing to set it on so all right guys this has gone on long enough i appreciate you listening love that you're watching um have a great day and i'll see you next time